Hello and welcome to this interview on intercultural understanding and education as part of the StoryAid EU project, a project funded by the European Union's Erasmus Plus program. Today we are joined by Simona Fabellini, an expert in intercultural education from Assist International HR. Simona, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, we're delighted to have you here. Um, and the first question is a very broad and maybe very difficult one, but why is intercultural understanding so important? Yes, it's a, it's, it's a really difficult question. And um, I think our societies are experiencing profound and, and challenging changes uh, in population. And just think of the migration flows over the past years, uh, which have brought uh, new new people from all parts of the world to our countries. And, um, and these people want to find a place uh, in our societies, in, in new societies. And um, these places may be very different from the ones they were used to live in. So... Um, these people want to, of course, they want to, to live, to, to work, to integrate in this new um, environment, but um, they bring along their own experiences, their own cultural background, their own values and, and attitudes, um, which may be very different from, from this new societies they live in now. Um, so I believe that intercultural understanding um, helps building bridges. Um, to, and overcoming the cultural differences. Uh, so, uh, and brings also um, new, uh, new chances to um, understand the challenges of uh, cultural diversity. And of course, we could assume that um, talking the same language uh, is ever already enough. And indeed, language um, and the sa sharing the same language is very uh, important. Um, for intercultural understanding, but maybe it isn't enough because um, behind a language uh, there are also um, other factors um, driven by cultural patterns. Just think of um, communication styles. There are, for example, cultures uh, which are more direct and, and cultures which have more indirect communication styles. This means um, that to really understand the communication in those cultures, we have to consider um, all this, uh, which is uh, called um, uh, nonverbal and paraverbal. So the gestures, uh, the mimic, yeah? and this is, um, if you don't, if you're not used to, um, this is, can be quite challenging. Um, or, for example, think of different meanings. Um, think of the word family. Um, family in some cultures um, means only the parents and the children. And um, in other cultures, a family consists um, of a wider entity of persons and, um, and goes back to, to the cousin of the third grade. Yeah? So all this is, is family. So um, I believe that um, these examples show already how challenging encounters uh, with people from other cultures can be. And um, I think it is helpful to, um, in this uh, intercultural situation, to increase one's own knowledge and um, awareness about cultural diversity. That's really fascinating. And as a migrant myself, I can definitely see some of those societal um, intercultural understanding issues um, coming to play. But our project is focused on healthcare and the healthcare setting. So could you tell us why intercultural understanding is important specifically in a healthcare setting? Um, well, it's, it's an important question and, it's, and this is uh, complex as well. <laughs> and um, because, um, well, I believe that uh, intercultural understanding in a healthcare setting is um, about understanding the needs um, from a cultural perspective of all parties involved in this very particular situ situation. So this means, of course, the patient, um, the caregivers and all household members involved. Um, and from this perspective, feeling um, the feeling of being culturally understood um, can help the patient and, and the household members to maybe trust more in, in the caregivers, to, um, to accept, for example, um, 
this new situation. Um, this means the, the situation of being in need of, of care, um, which is a very challenging one. And um, so to set these new circumstances um, and also to enhance in these new circumstances, the cooperation from all household members. And um, maybe if it's necessary to open up to, to new treatments in a, in a positive way. And um, so this is the part of the of the patient and the and, and the household. But of course, we have to consider also uh, the caregivers. And uh, so for the caregivers, and uh, intercultural understanding helps to maybe reduce stress, um, which can be due to um, little understanding or, or less knowledge um, about uh, culture, about the other culture, about the culture of the patient. Um, and um, this feeling of, um, of stress um, can lead to some sort of helplessness because one doesn't know what, uh, what to do in this particular situation. So um, I believe that intercultural understanding in a house setting can be especially um, challenging, also because um, the patients may not be able to express themselves verbally. So um, from the side of the caregivers, it is important to know about, for example, food habits, um, religious traditions um, in certain circumstances, um, and uh, maybe also to know about um, or to understand that um, pain and pain expression and also um, the understanding of what is a private zone can be very different from culture to culture. And I could imagine that, um, for example, in situations like washing and medicating, this can be very important. So um, I suppose that intercultural understanding can contribute to provide uh, better support to the patient and the whole household. That's really, really fascinating and, and extremely important to healthcare. Um, I think it'd be really nice if we could just sum, sum all this up because there's a lot of detail there um, for the listeners and just maybe one practical example that you have from your previous experience. Yes, um, of course, there, there are so many examples and it's difficult because there's so many different cultures um, which one could take as an example. But let's uh, just imagine um, um, an elderly a situation uh, in a household, um, an elderly woman uh, with Arab background um, came back home from hospital where, where she had an operation um, and the wound has still to be treated um, and medicated. And um, in the household, there's already a, a female nurse. Um, so the female nurse enters the room and uh, sees this um, elderly lady um, in her traditional clothing lying in the bed. And just in this moment, as she, as a nurse enters uh, the room, the elderly lady turns to the wall. And um, the nurse knows, well, this is a gesture, this must have a, some, some sort of meaning, but she can't interpret this, this meaning. And she somehow takes it personally, maybe because she feels somehow rejected. Um, she starts doubting about the respect, yeah, as if this role, um, if she is respected in, in her role as a nurse. Um, so this creates a sort of tension between the patient um, and the caregiver, the nurse. Um, so, of course, we have to, to, to try to, to analyze this, this situation. So, um, and we could think um, that the elderly lady maybe doesn't respect the nurse um, because of a young age. So this turning to the wall could really be um, some sort of a gesture of disrespect. But probably this is not um, the case um, because why, why should she? Yeah? Um, maybe, and this is also another thing to consider, um, the, the lady is in such pain that um, culturally given, the only mode of expression is just this gesture. So this gesture is just a, a sign of a mental and, and physical state she is in. Um, and um, of course, it's a very challenging situation for the nurse because she is probably the one who has to approach the situation and it's important to, uh, to approach, otherwise this tension won't be, be solved. So she could try to um, 
to to express um, her doubts about this gesture. And um, but this, if this is not possible because of language barriers or other barrier communication barriers, um, she could try to do an empathic empathetic gesture, like um, putting her hand on the shoulder. She could try if the lady reacts to this in a positive way. So. Um, but it's important in, in these situations to it somehow to try to address um, this, uh, this situation. So um, I suppose that for the caregivers, um, the challenging point is, is probably to find the right balance between feeling respected in the professional role, um, but also respecting cultural traditions of the patients they are looking after. Um, which might also mean accepting forms of behavior contrary to one's own values. Um, and um, yeah, so just just think also uh, of another situation um, which has to do very much with values. Um, for example, the washing of a male person um, or male pa patient of um, Muslim religion um, or Muslim background only, um, and uh, this patient is uh, looked after a, a female caregiver. Muslim patients usually prefer to be looked after um, by by persons of the same sex, but if this is not possible, of course, they also accept other care. Um, but um, it's important to respect this culturally given sense of shame, which can be different from culture to culture. And, um, and this um, sense of shame is behind this um, um, preference to being to be treated by by male person actually. So what could a, a female um, caregiver uh, do? Um, she could, for example, try to lower the glance to respect the private zone of the male patient. She uh, could try to to be a bit more distant, maybe with her gestures, if it's possible. Yeah. So um, just to to um, to consider that private zones are very culturally um, different. Thank you very much, Simona. That was really interesting. And if uh, people watching this interview would like to know more about intercultural understanding, and particularly in the context of our own project, you can visit storyaid.eu. Thank you for listening.